Hello, my dear students and the rest of the learners. Welcome to this presentation in which we are going to learn about the memory management in operating systems with our focus being on memory management policies. This is part nine of nine in a series of videos in this topic on memory management using operating systems. My name is Meme GM, or you can simply call me Emily Swap. Under this topic on memory management policies for visual memory, we are going to look on what we call the fetch policy, the placement policy, replacement policy, resident set management, cleaning policy, and load control. The design of the memory management portion of an operating system depends on three fundamental areas of choice. Number one is on whether or not to use visual memory techniques. Number two is the use of paging or segmentation or both. Number three is the algorithms employed for various aspects of memory management. The choices related to the algorithms that are employed for various aspects of memory management are the domain of operating systems, memory management policies. The following are the main memory management policies for visual memory. Number one, we have the fetch policy. Number two, we have placement policy. Number three, we have replacement policy. Number four, we have resident set management. Number five, we have cleaning policy. And number six, we have load control. The performance of any particular set of memory management policies depends on the following characteristics. Number one is memory size or main memory size. Number two is the relative speed of main and secondary memory. Number three is the size and number of processes competing for resources. Number four is the execution behavior of individual programs. So what is a fetch policy? This policy determines when a page should be brought into main memory. The two common alternatives are, number one, demand paging. In this case, a page is brought into main memory only when a reference is made to a location on that page. When a process is first started, there will be a flurry of page faults. As more and more pages are brought in, the principle of locality suggests that most future references will be to pages that are recently or have recently been brought in. Thus, after a time, matters should settle down and the number of page faults should drop to a very low level. Number two is pre-paging. Pages other than the one demanded by a page fault are brought in. This policy is ineffective if most of the extra pages that are brought in 
are not referenced. The prepending policy should be employed either when a process first starts up, in which case the programmer would somehow have to designate desired pages or every time a page fault occurs. The second policy is called placement policy. This policy determines where in real memory a process piece is to reside. In a pure segmentation system, the placement policy is an important design issue. Policies such as best fit, fast fit, and so on are possible alternatives. However, for a system that uses either pure paging or a paging combined with segmentation, placement is usually irrelevant because the address translation hardware and the main memory access hardware can perform their functions for any page frame combination with equal efficiency. The third policy is called the replacement policy. This is a policy which deals with the selection of a page in main memory to be replaced when a new page must be brought in. Therefore, when all of the frames in main memory are occupied and it is necessary to bring in a new page to satisfy a page fault, the replacement policy determines which page currently in memory is to be replaced. The scope of a replacement strategy can be categorized as global or local. Both types of policies are activated by a page fault when there are no free page frames. A, a local replacement policy chooses only among the resident pages of the process that generated the page fault in selecting a page to replace. A global replacement policy considers all unlocked pages in main memory as candidates for replacement, regardless of which process owns a particular page. When it happens that local policies are easier to analyze, there is no convincing evidence that they perform better than global policies which are attractive because of their simplicity of implementation and the minimal overhead. All of the policies have as their objective that the page that is removed should be the page least likely to be referenced in the near future. Because of the principle of locality, there is often a high correlation between recent referencing history and the near future referencing patterns. Thus, most policies try to predict future behavior on the basis of past behavior. One trade-off that must be considered is that the more elaborate and sophisticated the replacement policy, the greater will be the hardware and software overhead to implement it. One restriction on the replacement policy is that some of the frames in main memory may be locked. When a frame is locked, the page currently stored in that frame may not be replaced. Examples of frames that may be locked include kernel of the OS, key control structures, I.O. buffers, and other time-critical areas. Locking is achieved by associating a lock bit with each frame. This bit may be kept in a frame table as well as being included in the current page table. Some of the basic algorithms that are used 
for the selection of a page to replace, include optimal list recently used, fast in, fast out, clock, amongst others. Number four is resident set management policy. This is a policy that deals with making a decision as to how many pages to bring in, that is, how much memory to allocate to a particular process. Several factors come into play. These include, number one, the smaller the amount of memory allocated to a process, the more processes that can reside in main memory at any one time. This increases the probability that the operating system will find at least one ready process at any given time, and hence reduces the time lost due to swapping. Number two is if a relatively small number of pages of a process are in main memory, then despite the principle of locality, the rate of page faults will be rather high. Number three is beyond a certain size, additional allocation of main memory to a particular process will have no noticeable effect on the page fault rate for that process because of the principle of locality. With these factors in mind, two sorts of policies are found in contemporary operating systems. The first one is a fixed allocation policy. This policy gives a process a fixed number of frames in main memory within which to execute. That number is decided at initial load time, what we call process creation time, and may be determined based on the type of process that is interactive, bunch, or type of application, or may be based on guidance from the programmer or a system manager. With this policy, whichever a page fault occurs or whenever a page fault occurs in the execution of a process, one of the pages for that process must be replaced by the needed page. For this case, we have a process that is running in memory with a fixed number of frames. When a page fault occurs, the operating system must choose which page from among the currently resident pages for this process is to be replaced. Number two is a variable allocation policy. It allows the number of page frames allocated to a process to be varied over the lifetime of a process. Ideally, a process that is suffering persistently high levels of page faults, indicating that the principle of locality only holds in a weak form for that process, will be given additional page frames to reduce the page fault rate, whereas a process with an exceptionally low page fault rate, indicating that the process is quite well behaved from a locality point of view, will be given a reduced allocation with the hope that this will not noticeably increase the page fault rate. When a page fault occurs, a free frame is added to the resident set of a process and the page is brought in. Therefore, 
A process experiencing page faults will gradually grow in size, which should help reduce overall page faults in the system. The difficulty with this approach is that it requires the operating systems to assess the behavior of active processes. This inevitably requires software overhead in the operating systems and is dependent on hardware mechanisms that have been provided by the processor platform. There is a correlation between replacement scope and resident set size. A fixed resident set implies a local replacement policy. To hold the size of a resident set fixed, a page that is removed from main memory must be replaced by another page from the same process. A variable allocation policy can clearly employ a global replacement policy. The replacement policy of a page from one process in main memory with that of another causes the allocation of one process to grow by one page and that of the other to shrink by one page. The variable allocation and local replacement is a valid combination. The fifth policy is called the cleaning policy. This policy is concerned with determining when a modified page should be written out to secondary memory. It is the opposite of a fetch policy. Its two common alternatives are, number one, demand cleaning policy. In this case, a page is written out to secondary memory only when it has been selected for replacement. With this policy, the writing of another page is coupled to and precedes the reading in of a new page. This technique may minimize or may minimize page writes, but it means that a process that suffers a page fault may have to wait for two page transfers before it can be unblocked. This may decrease the processor utilization. Number two is pre-cleaning policy. In this case, it writes modified pages before their page frames are unneeded so that the pages can be written out in batches. In this policy, a page is written out but remains in main memory until the page replacement algorithm detects that it be removed. Pre-cleaning allows the writing of pages in batches but it makes little sense to write out the hundreds or thousands of pages only to find that the majority of them have been modified again before they are replaced. The transfer capacity of secondary memory is limited and should not be wasted with unnecessary cleaning operations. A better approach incorporates page buffering. This allows the adoption of the following policy. Clean only pages that are replaceable, but decouple the cleaning and replacement operations. So with the page buffering, replaced pages can be placed on two lists, the modified list, and the unmodified list. The pages on the modified list can periodically be written out in bunches and moved to the unmodified list. A page on the unmodified list is either declaimed if it is referenced or lost 
when its frame is assigned to another page. The sixth policy is called load control policy. This is a policy that is concerned with determining the number of processes that will be resident in main memory, which has been referred to as the multi-programming level. This policy is critical in effective memory management. If too few processes are resident at any one time, then there will be many occasions when all processes are unblocked and much time will be spent in swapping. On the other hand, if too many processes are resident, then on average, the size of the resident set of each process will be inadequate and the frequent faulting will occur. The result is the rushing. As the most programming level increases, a point is reached at which the average resident set is inadequate. At this point, the number of page faults rises dramatically and the processor utilization collapses. The main ways to approach this problem are number one, only those processes whose resident set is sufficiently large are allowed to execute. Number two, and adjusting the multi-programming level so that the mini time between the faults equals the mini time required to process a page fault. Number three is adapting the clock page replacement algorithm that we discussed on the previous videos on the page allocation, memory allocation technique. If the degree of multi-programming is to be reduced, one or more of the currently resident processes must be suspended, that is swapped out. The following are the six possibilities. Number one is lowest priority process. This implements a scheduling policy decision and is unrelated to performance issues. Number two is faulting process. The reasoning in this case is that there is a great probability that the faulting task does not have its working set resident and the performance would suffer least by suspending it. In addition, this choice has an immediate payoff because it blocks a process that is about to be blocked anyway, and it eliminates the overhead of a page replacement and IO operation. Number three is last process activated. This is the process least likely to have its working set resident. Number four is process with the smallest resident set. This will require the least future effort to reload. However, it penalizes programs with the strong locality. Number five is largest process. This obtains the most free frames in an overcommitted memory, making additional deactivations unlikely soon. Number six is process with the largest remaining execution window. In most process scaling schemes, a process may only run for a certain quantum of time before being interrupted and placed at the end of the read queue. This approximates a shortest 
processing time fast, scaling discipline. Congratulations for viewing and listening to this video on memory allocation policies, which is the last part of a nine part series of presentations or videos on memory management topic. You can listen to the other parts of memory management topic from part one to part eight, as well as other videos in the field of computers or ICT from Emily Swap ICT YouTube channel. In addition, for you to be able to access free life skills, motivational and inspirational resources, visit Emily Swap Motivation YouTube channel. I would also request that you subscribe to both channels in order to be able to receive immediate updates whenever a new video is posted if you have not already done so. In case you have any questions, comments, additions, or any other type of information that you'd like to get from us, you can kindly write to us through the email mlswap at gmail.com. Thank you very much for listening to me and be blessed.